today we're going to check out a mechanical keyboard that a couple of you wanted to see and is one that has spread around the internet mainly because of its price and its form factor. This board is from Ajaz and is the AK33. The box is quite simple in a natural cardboard colour. On the bottom right corner there's quite a large text of Geek which is probably unnecessary and isn't part of the model name in any way and at the top left corner is this blue sticker which I'll explain later. So this keyboard actually comes in three colours and today we're going to check out two of them. Opening the box we get another box which is nearly the same thing but it just is in black with red labelling which does look nice and I guess it does provide a bit more protection for the retail box. Inside the box we get the keyboard itself, the mini USB cable and some paperwork which is mainly in Chinese. So that was pretty normal but then when I opened the other box for whatever reason we get some extras in this one that were completely absent on the first one. We get a brush that can help clean your keyboard. We also get a plastic ring keycap puller but I always recommend using a wire keycap puller for your keyboards. And then we get this mouse pad that straight up uses a Batman logo but it actually does have their logo at the bottom there. It's just a standard 2mm cloth mouse pad with a rubber bottom and is 25 by 21 centimeters, so it's quite small but it is free and then we get the keyboard itself. And now we have the other keyboard and it seems to be quite a common theme on these cheap Chinese mechanical keyboards where they actually include soft cell foam which is really good protection for the keyboard during shipping. Also a nice touch is the printed foam sleeve. So here's the white one and there's some plastic film on the bottom which is a wiring sign and this is the same thing for the black one. So as I said before there are three versions this comes in, this regarding the key switches. There's the white version and the two black ones. The only difference between the two black ones are the colours of the LEDs. The first thing you'll probably notice is that unusual form factor. This is a 75% compact keyboard. This isn't some custom random layout and size they came up with and there's actually a couple of other 75% keyboards out there. The Nopu Choc Mini is quite a well known one and the KBT Race 2 is another one. Being 75% it's the form factor between the 60% keyboards and the 10 keyless keyboards. So these usually have 82 or 84 keys. Now this is quite interesting since a 10 keyless keyboard is considerably larger but the size difference compared to the 60% keyboards is really quite close but has way more keys than 61 keys on the 60% board. Therefore just based on the numbers this sounds like it offers the best balance between size and functionality. However the problem with this form factor is that there are two main layouts. This Ajaz board has 82 keys while the other layout like seen on the Chop Mini has 84 keys. So basically the 82 key version takes away 2 keys and therefore changes the size of the other keycaps to make up for that space. So it's got weird sizes for the escape key, delete, uh, right shift, the right control and then the arrow keys. So by making some of these keycaps larger, Ajaz sacrificed the dedicated print screen and pause key and more importantly a standard right shift. I typed this review using this keyboard and I constantly hit the up arrow key when attempting to hit the right shift key to do that percentage symbol. Even though these are weird sizes, there are keycap sets for these, albeit a tad more difficult to obtain and more expensive. And because of its compact size, it's naturally relatively light at 562 grams, which is just a touch heavier than my Poker 2 60% keyboard and much lighter than my CM Storm Rapid i10 keyless board. The character font or typeface that they use is really awesome and is something that is absent on many of these budget keyboards. They went with a completely plain font with a good medium sized text, so that's really good to see. Now the bottom of the keyboard is something that I dislike and manufacturers just seem to continue to implement this and that's this glossy plastic. On the white version it isn't too bad in comparison to the black one but glossy plastic just looks bad, it looks cheap, feels cheap and just gets dirty really easily. That being said it is on the bottom where it won't be seen as much and the sides are very low profile so it does minimize the problem to a degree. Then mounted onto the plastic bottom shell is the aluminium mounting plate which helps keep the weight down as well. And it does look anodized in a sleek silver. 
The aluminium is then chamfered on the edges which reveals a more shiny reflective look and I think this looks great and is a nice touch which makes the keyboard look more premium. But too bad that the bottom shell doesn't match that so I'll definitely be doing a paint job on that. To keep it more compact there is no top shell like seen on 10 keyless and full size keyboards so the key switches are exposed which is good for cleaning and we'll have a closer look at the key switches later. Ok so now let's turn them on. We'll use the included mini USB cables which are gold plated and are branded which helps differentiate them. And there, the white ones light up blue and the black one lights up orange and red in a gradient. The other black keyboard that I don't have with me just lights up white. The black one starts up in a snake pattern while the white one just goes straight to a solid light. Now there are various lighting modes on each board, however to my surprise they actually do differ. So this is done by holding the function key and hitting the F8 key. Since it's a weird layout, the function key is actually at the top instead of the bottom like usual, so that's something to get used to. The brightness and speed of the lights are controlled by the directional arrow keys, and to be honest I'm not one to use these other light modes so much, and I just like to keep it on a solid light, and I imagine most others do too, but I guess it's nice to have there as well. Taking off the keycaps we can finally see the key switches, and this brings us back to that blue sticker we saw in the box at the start, because these are actually Zorro key switches. This is yet another Chinese copy or clone of the famous German made Cherry MX key switches, and just like all the others they are clones to nearly every aspect, so yes they are interchangeable, so you can chuck in some Cherry MX key switches in there if you want, or you can put the Zorro ones in other keyboards. And these will be completely compatible with the Cherry MX keycaps since they have the same cross stem. These ones however have clear casings which helps disperse the LED lighting a bit more. These key switches in particular are the black ones. I did have a blue switch board on the way but unfortunately that fell through, but they'll be somewhat similar to the Cherry MX Blues. This one using blacks are linear switches as suspected, so they go straight down and have very smooth depression with no click or bump. Although to my surprise these are actually quite light. Now these are listed to be 60 gram plus or minus 10 gram switches, just like the Cherry MX Blacks, but these have quite large tolerances. But that's what we expect from a Chinese clone switch, which is always one of the greatest downsides to these clones. But then when I try out my Cougar board with the Cherry MX Black key switches, the overall feel of the Zorro Blacks feels smoother and much much lighter. Comparing it to my Poker 2 with Cherry MX Reds, they feel quite similar but are just a bit more heavier, and I would say that these are somewhat similar to Kale Yellow switches. However, upon closer inspection and individual key presses, the actuation force actually varied between each key switch. For most of them, they were just a touch heavier than the Cherry MX Reds, however a few of them were pretty much equal, and to my surprise some were actually just a touch lighter, but none of them were close to that 60 gram Cherry MX Black spec, so the weights didn't really go into that other direction or even close to 60. So that's just a real indication of the poor tolerances that these key switches have. So it's way off the listed specs, but it may just be my two keyboards, but it seems unlikely since I've read many other users having the same experience. So yeah, I know that black switches are usually the more neglected switch, but in reality these are more like reds. But of course your experience may vary because of the poor tolerances. And with poor tolerances, we can also assume poorer quality control, and therefore the durability and lifetime of these key switches are up in the air, and really only time will tell on how long these will last. The keycaps are backlit keycaps and are white translucent ABS plastic with a black coating over the top of it and laser etched characters, and this is just the opposite for the white keycaps. 
I'm not a fan of these since the black coating can fade away and I've actually dealt with a lot of cheap Chinese boards recently that actually have double shot keycaps so it's unfortunate that they didn't follow that trend. Also the back or top row of the keycaps are much higher than a standard layout keyboard. So these are just monster keycaps especially that escape key and delete key. Typically the keycap height will max out at the number row and the function row will be of the same height. But since there's no separation between the number row and the function row that you normally see, these hiding keycaps continue that contoured key pattern. The disassembly is really simple since there's no top plastic shell and it's just a couple of Phillips head screws which one is under the sticker. As we can see, it's clear as to why that it's such a compact and light keyboard. The bottom ABS plastic shell is very low profile and features just a touch of ribbing on the bottom surface for reinforcement. So it's not the strongest but coupled with a metal backplate, there's no problems. The PCB looks standard with a typical soldering job. Although the solder is shiny and is probably not lead free solder so if you're going to be doing some desoldering don't breathe in those fumes. Speaking of desoldering you will have to desolder if you wish to switch out any of the switches for different ones. This is because these are plate mounted key switches meaning that the PCB is mounted to the metal backplate and then on top of the metal backplate are the key switches themselves. Since it features a detachable cable, the mini USB port is soldered directly to the PCB on the back and it's pretty sturdy, although if it were to come loose you would have to do some soldering there and lastly they use cherry style stabilizers for the longer keys. And now that the keyboard is apart, I'm going to take this opportunity to get rid of that terrible terrible glossy black finish and here it is with a new and improved silver metallic finish to go with the silver aluminium. It isn't colour matched or anything, I just picked up a silver that I had and this silver in particular is mercury silver. So I made it just really simple to keep it minimal. One thing that I noticed was that there is this one thread here for the tiny Phillips head screw and it just isn't right. So the metal plate and the bottom shell don't fit tightly together. So that's quite disappointing since we can see a bit of a gap there and a bit of the original colour. So overall it's a really really interesting keyboard because of its odd size at 75% and it's very low price of approximately 40-ish dollars US online and this includes a reasonable construction including anodized aluminium and also backlighting with various modes depending on your model. However, the lack of standards in the layout is quite frustrating, especially for those who would like to customize the look of their keyboard with aftermarket keycaps. And then the key switches, while they will provide an unmistakable mechanical experience and feel, they are quite erratic in terms of their actuation forces, which is due to the very poor tolerances. But I would definitely recommend this as an entry level board at a budget because you do get a lot for the price and they are quite unique in terms of price and looks, especially that molten version one. And I guess it would be a really good secondary keyboard that you would be able to carry around anywhere because of its size and weight.